In today's video, we are going to be talking about the new Dark Angels Combo Patrol Box. We are going to be talking about points and savings as well, but we are going to mostly focus on the rules. So I've been already talking about this combo patrol a couple of weeks ago and the leak came true. It is exactly the box that everyone expected it to be and there's really not much more to add here. So the video I made a few weeks ago is more or less 100% accurate. My estimations when it comes to the pricing of the upgrade sprue, the upgrade sprue being included and all that good stuff is also accurate. But we're going to go over it once more just for completionist's sake. So how about we get the first things out of the way first. So first up, what are you getting in this particular combo patrol box? You are getting one Captain Gravis armor. This is the new one, which has different weapon options like a power fist, a power sword, or a chainsaw. Then you have 10 intercessors. These are just your baseline infantry. There's sadly nothing special about them. Then we have three Blade Guard veterans. This is a little bit of a weird choice considering how many other options the Dark Angels have received, especially now with the new codex and with all the new releases. There would have been space here for a different unit than Blake Up Veterans, but it is what it is. They're still a solid unit and good looking models. And last but not least, we have half a box of Hellblasters. This means that you are getting five models of them. You can assemble them however way you want because the different plasma options that they once had don't have any meaning anymore. They are just plasma weapons at this point, so you can assemble them any way you want. Now, all of this is going to get you to 465 points, which is by no means bad, but also, nothing to write home about. It's more or less average. If we put that next to the old Dark Angels Combo Patrol box, which I'm sure you still remember, which is just a Chaplain, Intercessors, Tree Inceptors, and a Redemptor Dreadnought, you're getting 455 points at that one. So both of them are fairly close when it comes to that. Now, when it comes to the list itself, a few comments from my side. For one, GW is 100% moving away from including any vehicles and any Dreadnoughts or anything that is above Toughness 9 or 10 in these boxes. And I think that is going to be the trend moving forward. I don't think any of the future combo patrol boxes are going to include anything that's tougher than maybe toughness 8. I think toughness 8 is going to be probably the limit. It's also going to depend a little bit on the price of the vehicle and so on. I think there are some smaller walkers that are fine, like a Sentinel, for example, from the Astro Militarum. But um, definitely don't expect any impulsors. I think all the impulsors are going to be gone from combo patrol boxes. Don't expect any Redemptors to be uh, discounted and all that good stuff. I think all the Space Marine boxes moving forward are going to be infantry focused. Next up, a couple of comments and criticisms when it comes to the list itself and the box and what it includes. You're getting one Captain Gravis armor. This is probably the most glaring problem with this box. It cannot attach to anything. It doesn't mesh with the rest of the box. NGW has a trillion different choices with the Space Marines to include in this particular box to make it mesh a little bit better and to make it a little bit more cohesive, like a regular chaplain, a regular librarian, a regular captain, the choices are numerous. Even a lieutenant would have made sense. Instead, we are getting a Captain Gravis armor, which is forced to run on its own. That's a little bit weird, and I wonder what the thought process here is, outside of they obviously want to push you towards buying Gravis units once you're done painting this particular box, which is a little bit scummy, to be completely honest. And then we have the Trey Blakeguard veterans, uh, which I criticize not because the models are bad, not because they look bad. They are excellent models. The kit is great. The problem here is that the Blake Up veterans could have been replaced by, for example, the new Inner Circle Companions. Those are also the same squad size and fairly similar in what they do on the battlefield, and they would have made way more sense for the Dark Angels. Now, the benefit from getting just Blake Up veterans is that it makes the entire box more universal. You can obviously use it for other chapters as well. You just have to get rid of their upgrades, put that is in there or sell it. Um, other than that, it's going to be a fairly universal space ring box. But at this point, I would wish that they were a little bit more thematic towards the chapter, make a little bit more sense that way. And I would have preferred the Inner Circle Companions here instead of the Blake Up Veterans, but that is just my personal preference. Next up, we are going to pull out the savings tables again, just so we have those memories refreshed as well. The new Dark Angels Combo Patrol is going to be costing you just as much as any other Combo Patrol box. Not sure about the pricing in Australia and Japan. Those could be fluctuating a bit, but you're going to be saving approximately say 16 to 18 percent if you have no use for the upgrade sprue at all, and if you are going to try to se sell it separately or something. And if you have use for the upgrade sprue because you're actually playing Dark Angels, you're going to be saving between 29 and 31 percent, which is more or less average these days. So without the upgrade sprue, if there's a single model in here or a single kit that you have no use for. Um, at that point, just buy your stuff separately because then you have a unit that you don't need and an upgrade sprue 
And at that point, the entire box doesn't make any sense. But the savings are more or less similar to what the old Dark Angels Combat Patrol offered. If we take a look at that one, you save between 22 and 23% without the upgrade sprue and approximately 27 to 29% with the upgrade sprue. So it's fairly similar. You're saving a little bit more without the upgrade sprue simply because the upgrade sprue, the new one, is way more expensive than the old one. And the other way around, you're saving a little bit more if you have actually used for the upgrade sprue in the new Dark Angels box. So there you have it, nothing to write home about. There, the savings are okay. As soon as you don't need a single unit, in my opinion, both are not worth purchasing uh, unless you really need that Redemptor Dreadnought on sale. Would I recommend you buy the old one currently? I would if you're interested in Dark Angels, if you're interested in Space Marines and you like the look of a Redemptor Dreadnought and you don't have um, any of the other units and models included in their box or if you have use for multiples of those, I would definitely recommend you pick up the old one still because it's available at least here in Germany uh, at multiple vendors. Not sure how it's looking over in the UK or the US, but you can share your thoughts and your findings uh, down in the comments below. That always helps. And yeah, that's basically it. TLDR, the savings are very much average. Next up, we are going to be talking about the rules for the Combo Patrol. I've played a quick game of Combo Patrol just a couple of minutes ago before starting recording, just so I have some initial thoughts when it comes to this particular Combo Patrol. So the first thing we are going to be talking about are the stratagems. So we are getting a 1 CP fight on death stratagem on 4+, which is going to be a 3+, for Blade Guard veterans. This stratagem has come in handy once, if at all, because Blade Guard veterans are very tough, a lot of units in combat patrol are struggling to take them down, so you, for one, don't want a lot of Blade Guard veterans to just die, and secondly, um, taking out multiples of them in one fight phase, for example, is going to be very rare for your opponent to do, unless they have dedicated very strong melee infantry, like for example Typhus or just your average, I don't know, Adeptus Custodius unit from the Combat Patrol, those are going to deal with them. But most other Combat Patrols are going to really struggle with Blade Guards, so even on a 3 plus, it's not that useful. Um, meanwhile, for the other units, they are more ranged units, and yeah, it is what it is there. Then we have a 1 CP pile in and consolidate 6 inches stratagem. This one is a little bit more useful, especially for your captain as well as your Blade Guard veterans. Um, I rarely am going to use those on the ranged units. At points, you just want to move those extra inches with them, but most of the time it's all on your melee units, and that's that. It's a fine stratagem, but nah, nothing to write home about. Then we have a 1 CP lethal hits when shooting. This one is going to help your shooting units really punch through armor, especially once your Hellblasters are gone, because uh, the first thing that me and my friend talked about when playing this particular box is that once the Hellblasters are gone, this box is really struggling against lists that have higher toughness units. Even just a Psychophage from the Turnip box is going to be a threat at that point. So yeah, if you're playing against this particular box at some point, take out the Hellblasters first. They are the first and most important target to, to remove at that point. This box is going to be struggling outside of gaining points because you still have a lot of bodies with intercessors. But the one CP lethal hits when shooting is the stratagem that obviously I spent the most command points on simply because it's the best one outside of command rerolls and all that good stuff. So yeah, that one lethal hits when shooting really, really good. Then we have the enhancements. Remember that the Gravis Captain is on his own, so he doesn't get any additional cool stuff. So he either gets sustain hits one while on an objective, which I think is objectively bad. And then he gets gain 1 CP on a 4 up if you destroy your Oath of Moment target. This one is a lot better, getting those command points for the additional lethal hits, getting the command points for rerolls and so on is going to be very crucial. So I think the optional enhancement of just getting the occasional additional 1 CP is a lot more valuable in my opinion. And that's why I just took it outright and didn't even try the first one. Then we have secondary objectives. Either your opponent nominates a midfield marker, so basically no man's land, and if you take it, for each turn you're holding it, you get 5 victory points. This one is extremely good, especially because you have a lot of bodies, you have a lot of battle line that has 2 OC, and you can actually contest those objectives, which is great. And the second secondary is you destroy either a character for 5 victory points, and if you've destroyed all characters, you get an additional victory points at uh, five victory points at the end of the game. Both of these secondaries are actually excellent. Which one to pick really depends on your opponent. If your opponent is playing a combat patrol, like for example the 
Tau 1, which happens to have two characters, which is very rare. At that point, I wouldn't pick the second one simply because a guaranteeing that it actually comes to bear is a little bit more difficult than just pick the first one. If your opponent just has one very squishy character, just pick the second secondary, run at that character, kill it, and then get your 10 victory points. It's going to be an easy game at that point. So yeah, the rules overall, the stratagems are a little bit of a mixed bag in my opinion. The fight on death is just not that synergistic with the units that are included in this box. The pylon and consolidate six inches is useful situationally, and the lethal hits when shooting is great. The enhancements with um, just the sustained hits I personally don't like, and getting an occasional one CP is great. And both secondary objectives are amazing in my opinion. So my first impressions on this box are fairly positive, simply from a gameplay perspective. But I personally really dislike the development that we are going to go away from any vehicles and any mechanized units and we are going to go full on infantry and basically have ourselves a boarding patrol kind of style combat patrol game in 11th edition once all the current combat patrols are going to get replaced. That sucks a little bit but it is what it is. As always once the points update and the data slate drops I'm going to put out a lot more combat patrol reviews with lore, with additional games played, personal experiences, with tactics, all that good stuff. So if you want to see more Combat Patrol content, definitely subscribe, leave a thumbs up. It helps a ton. And if you have any thoughts on this Combat Patrol and its rules, please drop them down in the comments below and let me know what your first impressions are on this particular Combat Patrol. Or maybe you even already had the chance to play with these rules because the rules have been leaked for like a couple of days now. So uh, realistically, you could have already had the chance to try this one out. So yeah, that is that. I hope this video was insightful and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.